Psst. Hey. Hey, you. Do you want to see a broken build? Well, I got something just for you. This is without a doubt the most insane damage I've managed to get on a build in No Rest for the Wicked. I literally beat the boss in 3 shots. Now if you are thinking this build is just about the damage, think again. This build has defenses that could stop a freight train, mobility that would make a cat jealous, health and focus gain so good you'll feel like you discovered the game's cheat codes. Also, this build is as deadly up close as it is from a distance, wielding one of the best dexterity spears in the game. The main weapon of this build is the Yoon Longbow that naturally comes with the best bow rune in the entire game, the Cone Shot. You can get this bow simply by going to Whittaker, the woodcutter NPC, and buying it for around 3 silver. In this new update they introduce new stats when you enchant bows. The stats I recommend you try to get are any element damage and weight decrease. The weight is that it can help you wear the heaviest armor without investing too much into equip load. For the gems, you can either add damage increased or any damage element that can stack with your enchantment. Now a few days ago, when they released this new Crucible patch, elements on the bow were bugged during the final boss of the Crucible. I am happy to say they just fix it. You can now use the bow with any element. Now on your other hand, you can use any one-handed weapon. Since the bow is a dexterity weapon, I'm using the Needle Spear. The important stat that you need to get on this weapon is the Focus Gain on Damage Dealt. Of course, if you get health gain on damage dealt, even better. Then add a focus on damage dealt gem on it. This focus on damage dealt will contribute to the focus gain when using the bow in your other hand. The damage on this weapon will not increase the damage of the bow. The second reason I'm using the needle spear is because it naturally comes with the best damage buff rune, the damage surge. I also added the twirl dash on it to make it as powerful as the bow in close combat. Now for the rest of the gear. On the helmet, the important stats are Poise, Stamina and Weight Decrease. I also added a Stamina Decrease gem. We are focusing on Stamina because the normal bow attacks use a lot of Stamina. For the body armor I got Equip Load, Poise and Stamina. For the gem I added a Focus Increase. Then we have the gloves where I rolled Equip Load and again Stamina. I added a Weight Decrease gem to make me even more lighter. For the pants I got a Poise Increased. And most importantly, I added a gem that gives me focus on focus used. For the rings, I'm using a rune ring that increases my rune attacks. A fierce ring that increases my armor and overall damage. Lastly, a ring of broken promises that increases my overall damage. And if you haven't noticed, I have exalted my entire gear to increase all of the stats to the maximum. In order to exalt weapons, you need to go to Seneschal. The Seneschal is a new NPC that you can only find in the middle of the Crucible dungeon. You can collect Gloam Seeds through the dungeon and unlock new mechanics like the Respec option. It will also unlock the option to turn your gear into Exalted, meaning it will maximize the stats of that gear. This is a huge game changer. As Exalted weapons are permanent, outside of the Crucible as well. For the stats, I'm using 30 in Health, 45 in Dexterity to be able to use the Bow and Spear. 20 in focus to be able to spam the rune attacks, and 32 in equip load to put me into the normal weight category. Finally, I have the maximum poise from the equipment. Now on its own, this build is the most versatile build there is, but getting to this insane damage, you will still need to use echoes. I will show the entire run of the crucible to showcase the build, and I will also showcase all the echoes I will choose at the end after I beat the boss. I will talk about the key echoes that really made possible this insane damage. So let's get started. I want to say that I think this game will turn out to be amazing when it is finished. It's still early access, so a lot of things can and will change. But so far the developers have really listened to the community. They fixed a lot of things and now they added some chests in the Seneschal room. This will help newer players get some materials to upgrade their weapons, but I still strongly believe they need to make the Crucible give players experience. Now for the chests, I know there is a room that had a secret chest behind the waterfall. But I still think it's not enough. I think they should change the end and middle rooms. They should put the room with the 5 chests that you get from the end boss in the middle, so new players have a chance to get some good loot. 
This way they can grow in order to fight the final boss. And if they can beat the final boss, the Echo Knight, then we should be rewarded with meeting the Seneschal and be able to exalt weapons. This is the end content for the game. The place where players will spend most of their time. And currently it's not rewarding enough for new players to come back to it, as it doesn't offer them substantial rewards. For us players who have been playing for some time now, it's easy, as we already have endgame gear and we have maximum experience. But from a new player perspective, the current Crucible is too punishable. Adding better rewards, like better gear, faster for them to access, and adding experience to the dungeon will improve that for them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they really need to do this, but I'm just giving my own thoughts and suggestions on how I personally think the game can be improved. The current game, I think it's at its best. Thinking back how it was when they first revealed it to us, it really did improve by a lot. Now, honestly, I really love the new roguelike mechanics, but I don't think they should have focused on the Crucible. It's an improvement from the old dungeon, but the thing is, the old Crucible was working fine, without any problems. I think they should have focused on their original roadmap that they had, where the next update should have been the multiplayer. Or instead of the Crucible, they should have focused on fixing the stats and mechanics that don't work. The overall focus gain still doesn't work no matter how much I increase its percentage. The focus on damage dealt, and focus regeneration works. But the overall focus gain that technically should increase the damage and regeneration focus still doesn't work. The damage reflect also doesn't work at all. I remember there was a build with the damage reflect, where people were killing the Echo Knight in a matter of seconds without even attacking. After they released the first patch, the damage reflect was not working anymore. Not sure if they intentionally stopped the reflect stat, or they tried to fix it and broke it completely. Not to be confused with the deal damage on damage taken stat that still works. That unfortunately, you can only get this stat on one piece, the main armor. There is also the confusion with the knockback resistance, stagger resistance and poise. I think they should remove the knockback and stagger since they don't currently work, and just leave the poise. I would also like to see these stats on the character menu. I would like to see the attack speed stat there. The knockback resistance and stagger resistance. We have stamina regeneration there, but we don't have the focus regeneration or health regeneration. Then comes the problem with the houses. We have furniture, but in my case, for example, in all of the houses, I only have chests to store materials, gear and food. I literally have chests over chests. I think the decorations are useless. Maybe they can give some effects or buffs to us. That way, it will make us actually use the decorations. I would also like to see some farming mechanics. I'm seeing so many signs of farms and ways that can be implemented. This will help a lot with actually making players get invested with the crafting of different potions and food recipes. Now again, these are just some of my thoughts and suggestions. The second patch after the Crucible really did fix a lot of problems. Especially the performance issues while using the bow with elements during the Echo Knight. They fix flame enchantment effects staying too long on fired arrows, and I can now do this insane build. They improved Echo Knight's hit cooldown to prevent accumulation. They fixed certain echoes reactivating after leaving the Crucible. Fixed heal over time not refreshing correctly when reapplied. They added these two chests in the Seneschal room. They also fixed staggering an enemy no longer breaks their poise. This prevents enemies from getting in interrupt loops or repeatedly getting staggered. We just got Bloodthirst Echo. This is one of the key echoes for this insane damage. This echo increases the overall damage by 50%, but you take 25% more damage. There is no problem, as now you can basically one-shot kill most of the enemies in the Crucible. And even if you take a lot of damage, this build has so much armor, you will still not die. The lock onto the enemies in this game still is a bit clunky. Now with this Bloodthirst Echo, you should see me already doing an insane amount of damage. Just look at that damage. The Conshot Rune shoots 8 arrows. Now look at my damage. 120 normal damage per arrow and 500 from the Ice Elemental. They don't stand a chance. Remember when I said that there is a chamber with a hidden chest behind a waterfall? It's here. Now when I was doing this run I forgot about it. But you have to slide on the small edge and you will soon find it. It's usually a big chest there. Now with this build, there is a weakness, and that is the destructible objects like the vases. You will sometimes lock on to an enemy, and when you shoot at him, you hit the vases instead. Remember that you generate focus on damage dealt. So if you don't hit the enemy, you might end up in an awkward situation where you keep pressing the button and you realize you don't have enough focus. 
We got another key echo, the ancient hex that makes you do 25% more elemental damage to enemies. The way I build these echoes is by only choosing the ones that give me overall damage. Element damage, rune damage, critical chance. And sometimes, if I really don't have any damage echoes, I will choose the focus related ones. If I don't see any of those, I re-roll all the echoes. Since my weapon is ice damage, I will also choose all the ice damage. Any other element damage will overlap with my ice damage. The idea is to have a lot of ice to enable the frozen effect. Also, a small thing I noticed is that if you take a damage echo or ice element echo, the next time you re-roll, you can get the advanced version of that. If you choose multiple element ones or echoes that are not increasing your overall damage, you have a chance to get the advanced version of those. I don't want to fill up my echo list with useless ones, so I ignore them and only go for the ones that help me boost my damage. By the end, I will find the most powerful echo. That echo is the Might of Echoes. And the funny thing is that I will get that echo when I choose a random one. I basically did not even knew I had that damage until I started to hit the boss. There they are. The dual echo and lucky charm gives you random echoes. You might get some of the most powerful ones or weak ones. The damage is insane with the echoes I already have. I know I said this in my previous video but I simply love the graphics and the art of this game. This new crucible design really gives the dark fantasy vibe. I also love the sound effects. They added new sound effects when you pick up the treads. Two more and on to the next and final chamber before the boss. Let's get a few more random echoes. I hate the version of this chamber that has water. It slows you down even if you roll. Just look at that damage. One of the random echo just considerably boosted my elemental damage. There should be two more enemies left and we go on to the boss. Scrap that, there are three enemies left. One of the downsides of this range build is that if you want to pick up the orbs on the ground, you need to be close to them. So you can advance to the next chamber faster and ignore the orbs, but if you want to get more powerful, I recommend you pick up everything. You can also find these orbs in the destructible vases and pots throughout the dungeon. And now, unknowingly, I got the best echo in the entire game, the Might of Echoes. For the Echoes we have Death's Spite, Focused Strike, Lethal Hope, Momentum, Vital Lash, Insidious Leech, Cold Shock, Ancient Blight, Bloodthirst, Endless Road, Arcane Reservoir, Ancient Hex, Broken Phoenix, Serim Shriek, Dark Precision, Cold Mastery, Rogue Shot, Kill Streak, Endurance, Blitzing Fury, Might of Echoes, Butcher's Endurance, Sayer's Breath, Reaper's Reward, Sayer's Grace, Fevered Attack, and Second Wind. All the echoes are important, but the key echoes that really made possible this insane damage are Serim Shriek, that is increasing the damage of rune attacks by 25%. Cold Mastery that adds 25% cold damage to your attacks. Ancient Hex. Enemies take 25% more elemental damage. Then we have Bloodthirst, which increases damage by 50% but takes 25% more damage. I was already doing insane damage with this, but to top it up I got Might of Echoes, that increases my damage by 3% for each acquired Echo. I have 26 Echoes. In theory, it should give me another 87% more damage. 
And that is it, the most insane build I have ever done in no rest for the wicked. Best defense using the highest armor with maximum poise. Best range using the cone shot rune. Best melee using the twirl dash rune. Incredible focus gain and health gain. And the best echoes that you can find. Keep in mind that the game is still in early access. So certain things might change with future patches. I hope this video helps you in your wicked journey. If you like this video consider subscribing and if you have any questions leave them in the comments. And that's it. Don't forget to pet my brothers and maybe give them some fish.